What's going on, everyone? We are here for another episode of the eye test. Today, we have two more hot topics that we're going to talk about, just like we did last week. I'm here with Paul Orlando, who is live from his parents' dining room. My parents' dining room. I'm watching my 15-year-old family dog who is deaf as a doorknob, but he is a sweet, sweet boy. And if you hear him breathing in the background, he's just saying hi. Yeah, I, I saw the China cabinet and I was like, that's totally not your house. That's that's screaming 1980s. Yeah, this is my mom's China. <laughs> nice. And uh, Bobby is still in Turkey or Mesopotamia. Oh, sure. yeah. yeah, he's somewhere. Mesoth- <laughs> Mesothelioma. <laughs> <laughs> he's got uh, five weeks left. So we're halfway done his trip, which means in five short weeks, all three of us, the gang, will be back. The full eye test. And we've got a lot more material coming out as the weeks go on, especially as we get closer to the foot. Oh, that's <laughs> so that's so 1980s. That's like your parents, parents have a wind chime, grandfather oh, clock, no. <laughs> a grandfather clock. All right, well that means it's dinner time. The the porridge is being is being split out. Come get your servings of oatmeal. Did your mom like ever whistle when you were outside with your friends? Like my whistle, dude. like dinner my, time. Yeah, my dad did. My dad had a mean whistle, dude. Yeah, and you hear it from like the cul-de-sac over, and you're like, "Guys, I gotta go!" And you just like sprint home. <laughs> yeah, I was good too. Like my time, I think that's one reason why I'm so good at time management is because I was trained with my dad's whistle. Like once you hear that, you're here. So yeah. Especially with what what's it called? Like the 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 start of the new NFL season. Is that like how they word it? Where like free agency begins? Is yeah, I guess called? just like, the like off season negotiations, free agency starts. Yeah, I just thought that it had like a specific term, like like the start of the new NFL season. I don't know. Yeah, so I, I think you're right. I think the start of the league new year is technically not upon us yet. I that's think that's called. actually March 14th or March 15th. 15th. Is technically when the league new year begins, and that's when a lot of these guys can put pen to paper and that's sign new called. deals. Or, you know, they can obviously start negotiating now and agree to terms, but nothing is set in stone until – March 15th. So we're certainly going to have a free agency episode where we come up with updates on our podcast, TikTok, Instagram, any type of social media, especially our YouTube, which if you guys are watching on YouTube, welcome to another episode. Go ahead and press the like button and that subscribe button. That way you get notified when we come out with new content. Paul, we've got two hot topics that really came about this week. We could add a third with the Lamar Jackson and possibly Aaron Rodgers rumors that are swirling around, but we're going to focus on Derrick Henry and Derrick Carr today. Two different types of Derrick, two different styles of play. We're going to go ahead and start out with the Derrick Henry rumor that, honestly, that I felt like it came out of nowhere because this was not a rumor that I was even anticipating, especially this early in the season and before the draft. Um what are your thoughts on Derrick Henry? Do you, do you even think that it is a viable rumor to entertain? I think it's certainly viable. And the only reason is that the Titans are kind of in this weird space right now. They traded A.J. Brown last year. They missed the playoffs this year, right? Five and game, so, five game. Yeah. And so they're sitting here with this Pro Bowl, all pro caliber running back. But the thing is, is he's getting older. And they got money involved in them. And I think Derrick Henry still runs extremely well. I know that if I'm in a redraft league, I'm certainly grabbing him in the first round. There's no way that, you know, we're not entertaining that idea. Derrick Henry is still a stud. But from an NFL business standpoint, I can totally understand why the Titans might want to just, in a way, go scorched earth and get rid of some of their big cap hit veterans and kind of start new. So I think it's certainly viable. I think if the right team comes along with the right price tag for him, the Titans could certainly trade him. Yeah, it's certainly a rebuild year that the Titans are looking at where it's like, hey, we don't know if we can get as much for Derrick Henry next year as we can right now. So, And they have no supporting cast. So it's definitely time for them to start looking at the draft and rebuilding their team because Ryan Tannehill is also 
like 62 and he's Mm -hmm. he's pretty much done after this year i would say i'd say he's pretty much done now although real quick paul you actually just we both just did two segues there i had an idea of where i was going to go with based on what you said but how about my dynasty trade that i did with bobby amendola the other day i got rid of ryan Tannehill. i i thought the next move for him would him just be getting cut like two years from now but I found a way to move on from Ryan Tannehill. Wow. Did you see the Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. So you got Traylon Burks and and my pick, the Mm 1.05 that I traded Bob or I traded somebody. You traded like Andy and then he made his way, that made its way over to Bob. I think I actually used that for CD Lamb. I traded Matt that. But yeah, I, I moved up three spots in this year's draft. So I went, I had to give up the 1.8. So I, I moved up to the 1.5. I got Traylon Burks and I gave up the 1.8 next year's first and Ryan Tannehill. Dude, I think. Did I win that trade by a landslide? I think you dude? clearly won that trade. Like it's. I, I don't know what article Bob read. That said by Ryan Tannehill? Dude, I have no idea like what the deal was with that. The the one thing that helps out Bob is he he gained a first round pick, but it's gonna be a late first round pick. I don't see myself being a bottom tier team next year. No, your team is certainly not going anywhere. It's you're definitely gonna be competing for a playoff spot this year at the at the minimum. Yeah, for sure. As long as everyone stays healthy. All you did you you I just gave up of next year's first because I moved up in the draft. Yeah, you you moved up in the draft this year. You gave up in a next year first. But the kicker here is you got Traylon Burks. Dude, I got Traylon Burks. Like he's not he he passes the eye test for me and he's probably you know what Bob could have read is like the Titans are going to start with Malik Willis next year cuz that screws my Traylon Burks stonks if if Malik but, Willis is the starting quarterback. But not even really, because like the Titans, especially if they get rid of Derrick Henry, which can go to this, like they're gonna look to probably like Malik Willis, show us what you got. Throw the ball. Like he's gonna throw the ball probably 25, at least 25 times a game. And he'll be looking for Traylon. And he'll Traylon Burks is the only viable option on that offense. They have That's literally exactly. no other pass catchers. So just off of the sheer volume and target share that Traylon Burks is probably going to get, I think that's a slam dunk for you, dude. I that's not even a counter. Like Bobby offered it to me, I thought about it for maybe two hours, and I was like, I'm kind of stupid for not accepting this. Like I was trying to see the trick that Bobby had up his sleeve, but anyway, this episode is going a little bit longer than expected. Let's get back on track here, Bobby. Good luck next year. I wish you nothing but health, but I absolutely ruined you in that trade. Anyway, you brought up a good point when you were talking about how you would draft Derrick Henry in the first round next year for redraft leagues, no matter what. My question is, is if he were to get traded to another team, and we can get into some specific landing spots now, we'll just do one of the the favorite landing spots that I think that he could really well go. If he were to go anywhere but the Titans next year, does Henry's value get affected from this in a negative way? I think, yes, it will get affected in a negative way. But when I say negative, it just means that he might go from King Henry to like younger. I don't even know how to put this. Of King Henry? Yeah. Like he, he might drop down, like he might lose 30 points a year. Like it's not like it's going to be a giant. It's not like he's going to go from an RB1 to an RB2. Or like a flex play. So like you, he'll, he's still a first round pick. Yeah, I, I absolutely think so. Especially because whatever team is going to pay that money to him is is certainly going to use him in some capacity. They're not going to just have Derrick Henry to be a running back by committee or to split the backfield touches. And Derrick Henry still has, I mean, we saw this year, I think he's still got plenty in the tank. The dude runs extremely hard. He just, I mean, he's a beast. He's an absolute beast. And so I think whoever does go and get him will look at him as a clear focal point in that offense. Okay, so I will propose a team to you. Let's talk about it a little bit. So I 
see him going to the Bills. The Bills need a running back. James Cook is average, but the Bills need offensive weapons other than Stefan Diggs and Josh Allen. So I ask you this, because I bring up those other two Bills. Out of the three players, Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, Derrick Henry, say Derrick Henry becomes a Bill. Let's talk about where their value goes now. So you've pretty much already touched on Henry, so let's focus on Bills players bringing in Henry. And, of course, that is the offense now. Where does their value go? Does it stay the same? Does it skyrocket? Does it go down a lot? Let's start with Josh Allen. What are your thoughts? I think if Derrick Henry's a Bill next year, I think a I don't want to say a bulk, but I think a good portion of Josh Allen's running upside will disappear. Mm -hmm. They're looking at bringing Henry in to basically be the Josh Allen. Now, Allen will certainly have his scrambles and he'll certainly have his improvised plays that he gets a good amount of rushing yards on. But the designed runs and, you know, what they're – Josh Allen was pretty much their rushing offense. Devin Singletary was okay. He was okay. But Derrick Henry will definitely be the goal line guy. So you're looking at a lot of touchdowns for Derrick Henry. And I think they're looking at – they're trying to create as much longevity in this organization as they can, and that starts with keeping Josh Allen off the ground. So that's where – I think that's where Derrick Henry comes in. You took the words right out of my mouth. I think they're just realizing, hey, we got to protect our franchise quarterback. He's running a lot. We need, and he play. loves being hit. Josh yeah. Allen loves being hit. So, yeah. and as he gets older, he's that opinion will change. All right. Well, let's let's hear what your thoughts are on Stefan Diggs. If Derrick Henry will become a Bill, I think Diggs will will stay where he is. I think that Diggs will still get you know, 15, 12 to 15 targets a game, somewhere around there. Some might be less if it is like a the one or two games a year that Gabe Davis decides to show up. But I think Diggs doesn't change very much at all. But what do you think? I I would agree with you again. I think what could really hurt Diggs's value is if they bring Derrick Henry in and they get a receiver in the offseason. Now I'm starting to get worried. So I do think that the bigger threat to Diggs would be a second wide receiver that is – much better than Gabe Davis, excuse me. I think just bringing Henry in, if it was just Henry, Diggs, and Allen, I think Diggs's value stays the same or could get better because now defenses can't hone in on Stefan Diggs. Now they have to focus on Derrick Henry too. So I I could see Diggs's value actually shooting up if it was just Henry that they brought in and it was a three-man show instead of like a four-man show. Now, do you think that in order, because obviously the Bills, this is my last question for the pod. Obviously, the Bills struggle with making a Super Bowl. They've gotten so close over the last couple of years. Do you think that if they were to just bring in Derrick Henry, that puts them in Super Bowl contention? Yeah. So I think I think if the Bills just bring in Derrick Henry this offseason and don't bring in an OBJ or even like a Juju Smith Schuster or somebody else who can kind of take the pressure off, I certainly think it increases their chances. Of making of making a you know that big run, especially because and really the the main thing that sticks out to me is in the in the playoffs, if you can run the ball and control the clock, that's like the kryptonite to beating a lot of these super powered high offensive teams. Where if you can control thirty five to forty minutes of the game clock, and you're facing Patrick Mahomes or Joe Burrow in the AFC Championship game, and you are keeping them off the field, then you can kind of control the game and it, it puts you in a better position to win. So I think it definitely increases their chances. But if the Bills want to make that giant leap to being a top two, top three Super Bowl contender, they got to bring somebody in to support that passing game. Because Gabe Gabe Davis just he he's not it. He doesn't pass yeah. the eye test for me. I that's what I would say too. Like I think if they really want to be in Super Bowl winning contention, Derrick Henry does not get them there. It certainly helps. And it could certainly help them lock up a number one seed in the AFC. Maybe. Because they get pretty darn close every single year. Definitely depends on what the Jets quarterback situation looks like in a couple of days. Because my opinion could change. Because Bill's got some competition with the Dolphins and the Jets now. Um, oh, oh, it's a soak your feet time. Yeah, I'm going to mute it real quick. Oh, just <laughs> no, one, you're good. one thing. There we go. All right. Well, hey, that is a good conversation about Derrick Henry. Any other teams that you think he could land on? The other team that I think makes the most sense, and I don't even know if they want to go after him just because they're going to have to pay a receiver by the name of Jalen Waddle in the next yep. year or so. 
But I think the Dolphins, if they get Derrick Henry, you get warm weather, and you get Derrick Henry, and you finally get that running game. I mean, they paid Chase Edmonds. It didn't work. They had to stick with Raheem Mostert, and they traded for Jeff Wilson. And if you put Derrick Henry on that team, you take so much pressure off of Tua. And I think the running game will just open up the deep ball even more for Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Yeah, and uh, the price for Derrick Henry next year is $10 million. So I don't know what the Dolphins' cap space looks like. I do know they have a ton of draft capital, though. I think I could see them going to the Dolphins for sure. And then it looks like the Eagles are like top betting favorites. I don't Mm -hmm. see it. But again, it is only $10 million. We're going to move on from Miles Sanders. So we are technically in the market. I just feel like we're in a position where we can totally draft a running back. It's a deep running back class. We have two first round picks, and I believe we have two second round picks also. So we can totally find a running back. I don't think the Eagles are going to get Derrick Henry, but if he were, our offense would be absolutely unbeatable and he would be reunited with AJ Brown. So that would be pretty cool. Paul, we will be talking more on Derek Carr for the next episode. If you guys are watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button and go ahead and like the video too because we don't really know if people like it, if they don't press the button. But we certainly want you to follow along with us for more content. You can check us out on all of our social medias. The handles are listed in the description below. Everyone have a great rest of their day and hopefully you get to work on time because you're probably listening to this on your way to work. See ya.